So moving on to the actual game of tennis. Now, it may come as no surprise to you that in order to succeed in trading the tennis markets, you do need to understand the rules of tennis and how the scoring works. Now, it'd be crazy for me to spend a whole chapter explaining the rules of tennis when there are so many great resources out there on the internet. Now, if you're not familiar with the game of tennis, then please do check out the following website, which will give you loads of information on the scoring of tennis. Now, once you have learnt all of the rules of tennis, if you do not know them already, uh, I would certainly also suggest you spend some time watching a number of tennis matches to familiarise yourself with the game. Uh, for the purpose of training, I would certainly avoid men's Grand Slam matches, as these do go into five sets rather than the usual three sets. Um, so basically, they just go on for a or can go on for a very long time so just focus on the three sets for the time being and that should give you a thorough understanding of the game of tennis. Now if you are not familiar with tennis matches and you are watching tennis matches to uh, basically learn the rules for the first time uh, here's some important aspects to pay attention to while you're watching the matches. First of all, uh, have a look at the importance of a break of service. So when the player serving loses a game on his or her service game. Secondly, the fact that whether it be a points or games, you can only ever win a game or set in tennis by winning by two clear points or two games. Pay attention to the fact of how often players change ends and have a short break, uh, as this becomes important with trading as you know how much time you actually have to actually place the trades. Also have a look at how tie breaks work. Uh, these occur when the score goes to 6-6. Six, six. Uh, tie breaks were a great invention to prevent matches going on indefinitely. So now we're going to look at the basics of pricing for the purpose of tennis trading. Now with tennis trading, we are essentially trading the movement of prices that can be bought and sold on the betting exchange. We can compare this somewhat to the prices bought and sold on the stock exchange or the foreign exchange. Prices rise and fall in tennis markets and we can take advantage of this rising and falling and can profit from any which way the price moves. Now before we get any further in depth, we need to become familiar with how this pricing works. In tennis trading, unlike traditional betting odds, which are usually priced in fractional odds format, for example, horse number seven is the two to one favorite, we use decimal pricing odds, as this makes life so much easier when trading the prices. Decimal pricing is just a different way of stating a certain price. Now to change price from fractional to decimal, you simply divide the first number by the second number and add one. Easy as that. So a horse or tennis player at odds of 2 to 1 would have a decimal price of 3. Simple. Luckily, we will always be working in decimal pricing and so does our trading platform and Betfair. So you will not need to do these calculations. I thought I would just include it for your information. So now is a good time to give you a bit of an introduction on the betting exchange that we use. So just like stocks and shares are traded on the stock exchange, we trade prices on the betting exchange. This betting exchange we use is called Betfair. Now this was a revolutionary invention in 1999 which changed the betting industry forever. Whereas with traditional bookmakers you could only ever bet on an event happening or a team or player winning, Betfair changed the goalposts by enabling punters to bet against an event happening or a team or player to lose. This develops into a huge betting exchange which contains solely the money of other traders and punters and not the money of bookmakers. This is where it is different from the traditional bookmakers. In this sense, it is a true exchange where you can buy and sell prices on any sports market with all of the money provided for by the general public. The amount of money in the exchange at any one time will depend on the particular market you are looking at. For example, a first round tennis match with little known players may have only around £5,000 in the exchange, whereas the Grand Slam final with big names may have upwards of £5 million in the exchange. Now depending on how much money you are trading with on the match, you will really have the problem of there not being enough money in the exchange to make, it tra to make the trading worthwhile. 
Now we call this the liquidity of the market. So the more money in the exchange, the greater the liquidity of the market. Now here's a bit more information on tennis pricing for those of you who are perhaps not too familiar with how the pricing on the betting exchanges works. Now first of all the prices start at 1.01 .01 and go up to 1000. The more likely a player is to win, the closer to the 1.01 .01 the price will move and the losing player will move closer to the 1000 mark. When, plays, when players are very evenly matched they will both be close to 2.0 or evens as we call it. For example, player 1 might be at 2, player 2 might also be at 2, or player 1 might be at 1.95, and player 2 may be at 2.05. You'll discover in the chapter on price balance how when one player's price moves, the other player's price moves proportionately in the other direction. This is just another beauty of tennis trading, as there are only ever two possible outcomes. Either one player wins, or the other player wins. This would of course be very different if you were to try and trade a football match as the prices would not move proportionately and it would be extremely difficult to predict where prices would move to. Now if you were to place a back bet or trade of £1 at 1.01 and the player went on to win, you would make a profit of one pence. This shows you that the price of 1.01 .01 pretty much implies that the player is on the verge of winning the match. If you were to place a back bet or trade £1 at odds of 2.0, you would make £1 profit. That's a profit of 100% as you would also be returned your £1 stake. So basically, you multiply your stake by the price, remembering that the amount you get will include your stake. Here are some typical pricing scenarios for some tennis matches to help you become more familiar with pricing odds. First of all, we have Svitolina versus Schmedlova. Svitolina is at 1.90 and Schmedlova is at 2.10. Now, this pricing scenario suggests that both players are very evenly matched. By the very nature of tennis pricing being mechanical and the typical tennis trading characteristic of price balance, we can actually predict to within one or two points where the prices will move to when one of the player wins the first set. And this enables us to enter into a trade in which we can make some very nice profit. Secondly, we have Kvitova at 1.25 versus Konta at 5.0. Now this pricing scenario suggests that Kvitova will be the likely winner and so is priced as a strong favourite. As you'll discover in the chapter on backing drifting favourites and also the strategy short priced favourites, we can take advantage of these types of matches and profit very handsomely from them. Thirdly, we've got Williams at 1.55 versus Vinci at 2.5. Now in this match, uh, Serena Williams is the favorite, but not as strong favorite as in the match above with Kvitova versus Konta. There are numerous trading possibilities in this match, depending on how either player is performing. And finally, we have Djokovic at 1.05 and Dolgopolov at 20.0. Now in this match Djokovic is priced as a very odds on favourite with Dolgopolov predicted to almost certainly lose. However in this match Djokovic did not win comfortably and by following the short price favourite strategy you would have made some excellent profit in this match. How we do this will all become clear uh, when we move on to talking through the strategies. So now we have a short exercise for you to do. Uh, I would like you to spend some time looking at the starting prices of some tennis matches that are going on in the next few days to further increase your familiarity with how the pricing works. As you look at these prices, have a think about who is the odds on favourite and then take a look at their current rankings and also the results of their previous five matches. You will then be able to see why they are given the starting prices that they have been given. So in order to do this, we go to Betfair, which you can find on Google. We then go to the Betfair Exchange. You'll then see all of the options along the top, and we click on Tennis. And then you'll see all the matches currently in play, 
and also the matches that are coming up later that day and also quite often it will show the matches showing on the following day as well so today we're on Friday and if we scroll all the way down we will also get the matches that are going on tomorrow Now in order to find the players uh, previous five matches we go to flashscores.com we click on tennis and if we scroll down here let's choose one player let's go for Geraldo and Montero as you click on that a pop-up box pops up you click on H2H which is head to head it will then show both players previous five results So now we're going to take a look at backing and laying instead of buying and selling. In many other trading markets, you typically buy and sell prices. In tennis trading, instead of buying and selling prices, we back and lay prices. Backing, like in the examples earlier, is when you place a stake of an amount of money to back a certain outcome. For example, you place a £10 back bet on Serena Williams winning at odds of 2.0. If Serena Williams went on to win, you would receive £10 profit plus your stake of £10, which means a total of £20, which is a 100% return on investment. In tennis trading, you typically want to back at high odds to ensure you get good value. Value is something I'll refer to back, back to frequently during the course. Value refers to gaining as much return as possible from your initial stake. Now in order to gain value in our tennis trading strategies, we will never back a player below odds of 2.0. If you were to back a player below 2.0, this represents poor value, as you would receive less profit than your original stake. Now laying, on the other hand, is the opposite to backing. When we lay, we are placing a trade wishing a player to lose. We only have ever lay at low prices in order to gain value. Now in order to gain value in our tennis trading strategies, we will never lay a player above odds of 1.25. If you were to lay a player above 1.25, this represents poor value. This will all become clear as we start to move through the course and especially when we move on to the strategies. So you will notice on Betfair when you look at the starting prices, the back and lay prices will always be displayed. If we have a look at Chorich and Kukushkin, you can see the back price of 1.28, lay price of 1.3, and the back price of Kukushkin at 4.4, and the lay price at 4.6. You will notice that the lay price is always uh, a couple of points higher than the back price. So, just again to really emphasise this point, in order to gain value in our tennis trading strategies, we will never back a player below odds of 2.0, and we will never lay a player above odds of 1.25. And always remember, just like if you were buying and selling uh, stocks on the stock exchange, you would buy low and sell high we're actually doing the slight opposite here we're backing high and laying low